Welcome to the IPD Build-Off Production Video Diary number 12. My name is David and I'm going to be your host today. I'm your host every day. This time we're going to talk about removing the trim on our 1967 Volvo 122S slash Amazon. So a good place to begin would be at the front with the business end of things. Remove the one screw there, first things first. One on either side of there. One there. And one on the other side of there. Once you have the headlight ring out, there are going to be several screws around the retaining plate for the actual bulb itself. And once you've removed the cover for the turn signal, the assembly pulls out from the rubber piece and the rubber piece itself will just pull out from the car. Don't! For the headlight you don't need to remember which wires go where, but for the turn signals... Green is on the right, white's on the left, and black is on bottom. And on the passenger side... Blue is on the big bulb, which is on the left, white's on the right, black on bottom. Next thing to remove is going to be the chrome Volvo letters on the hood. These are going to be fun. When you're removing the letters, crap. Removing these letters is a really hard, time consuming thing. There are two of these little tabs, they fit into here. The best way to do this, you're going to want to twist these little tabs like that. Keep doing this motion. Eventually, if you have trouble, you can grab one of these. Under it, like that, and then we go down. You're also going to want to be prying while it's on the car, you're going to want to be using the screwdriver, prying evenly along the big places that will not bend or break here. Even don't ever try to pry corners like that you will bend and break these letters. So there you have it. Using simple tools and a lot of time. It takes about five minutes per letter. You get it. Love you. Anytime you're pulling trim, you have to be careful that you don't bend or disfigure the trim. Usually a broad pry tool will work great, but these Volvo trim pieces are pretty beefy. So you don't have to worry as much, but still, if something's giving you trouble, don't spend too much time on it and trying to force it out. For example, this piece here wouldn't come out from the front, so just have to rethink your game plan and start from the back.
It's a good idea to also label your trim so you don't get mixed up. Ah, this is probably the worst piece to remove. I forget what the exact terminology for it was, but it has these little, uh, I call them sea turtle clips. It kind of looks like the little hands of a sea turtle poking out of its shell. Um, this is after you've unclipped the clip, and to help you visualize it, it's a little bit of this W shape. These are some of the tools that you're going to be using for removing this clip. So here we have on the passenger side, pry up gently with a screwdriver so you can get your clip remover in there. And what you're going to want to do is grab one of those little sea turtle paws and pull her out. I'm willing to bet that this job would have been a lot easier to do if I had removed the window first and then tried to pull out this trim piece. Oh well, live and learn. So, what we're going to do is probably reinstall it before we place the window back in with the new uh, window scraper, which is that rubber piece that runs along the glass. That's it. There are three clips on each side, and once you have the clips, just evenly and slowly pry it up. And slide it back. I will go to my brother. I've asked my brother. Out. Not too much damage on this side. Driver's side, though, probably just gonna leave that off because it's more work to fix than just to replace. So until I find a new one. Say bye bye to this old trim piece. So you have it up and out. This trim piece, I'm just gonna leave out. It was, I can't see any way of removing it without disfiguring it. It started to sort of roll up on itself. And unless you wanna spend hours with a leather hammer fixing the little dents and the the waves in it. Just leave it out. It looks cool without either way. This back piece here, that one will just sort of lift up. There's just a little bit of a hook on it. But for the side piece here, well you can see I had very little luck getting it out with a screwdriver. And silly me, I actually kept trying until I bent it out of shape and then eventually got it out just thinking, oh I'll fix it later. The proper way to get to this piece, though, I'm going to show you in a second, is not to be prying through screwdrivers in the back. What you're going to want to do is go on the inside, and you're going to find this clip. Um, the bolt goes, that flat piece holds the back, and the bolt is inside of the car. So reach your hand up and around in there through the headliner, and unbolt it, and save your trim piece from a really untimely death. To remove the windshield, we got a big razor blade and cut all the rubber out. Super old, dry rubber, and hold it, it holds that trim piece in place. And once you've got that out, you can cut more of the rubber out and then eventually pull the windshield out. Now with the rubber, is just sort of fused with the metal. It's like this really thick, hard plastic. So we're basically gonna have to uh, sand all that out one way or another before we paint it. Now the next trim piece is going to be the lights on the rear. There's a bolt for the bottom reflector housing. I'm going to be shaving my reflector housing, so if you guys are interested in buying a set, go ahead and comment on this video and we can figure something out. With the tail light, once you've removed the cover from the top and bottom screw and the chrome bezel piece, the entire housing has just two little screws holding it in place. Here's the old trunk gasket, just 40 years of not being kind. The bumper, I've removed it. We're going to be fixing it pretty soon. And here's the big pile of trim pieces. So here's a look at the car of the end of day one. Not bad for a day's work. 
It's only a couple things left to remove. Here's the easy way and much faster way of removing a windshield on a vintage car. This windshield is long overdue for a change and I will show you in an upcoming update the uh, correct way of installing a new windshield. Let's remove these wiper blades, flip them up, and pull straight out. And then once that's out, you can also work on this wiper cowl. About six or seven of those snapping clips that just hold it in place. And once it's out, you have a chance if your uh, mesh there is dented or bent like mine is, just flatten it out. Kids want to play, but they'll have to be patient. The wife can help tap their feet. 22 millimeter socket. It's the size you're going to need to remove those two nuts. And inside, you've got four screws holding the whole wiper assembly in place. Now for this corner window. Do you see those two nuts here? Because you don't need to mess with them. They're just for the adjusting the tensioning of the pivot. I can't see any way of removing that window without taking out this one first. Okay, so we've got track. similar tensioner, and this screw. These two are for the lock. This one's also for the lock. And this one for the regulator. And this is to open the door, that's the window. Here's the window. Push it back and down out of the way so that it's below that line and below this line. And you can pry this out. There's one. So you can pry this out. Should have caught the moment, but no. This one and that one removed. This whole thing just went boom out and out of that window. Beautiful. Look at that, all ready to paint. Remove that screw to release this cable. Door handle. Once you remove that screw, and then there's another screw a little bit alongside the handle, uh, pull out this pin here for the locking mechanism, and then just pull everything out. Now for the rear tail lights, they're just four bolts from the inside. You get access to those and then to remove this screen here, if you ever need to change a light bulb, just undo the one screw on the side and that gives you access to your bulbs. Now here's the old dry hard foam from the inside of the doors. <laughs> take a while to remove. Uh, just use like a chisel or a flat screwdriver and it'll help get that out. The door side is a little bit easier. The rubber is more pliable and you'll be able to just sort of pull on that corner, get it started and work your way around. Bye.
be unambitious, sleep till 11, just hang out with their friends. I mean, he had no occupations whatsoever, maybe working a couple hours a week at a coffee shop. Right? I thought that died out a long time ago. <laughs> Not in Portland. Portland is a city where young people go to retire. Dream of the night, this is the life of Portland. All the hot girls wear glasses. Yeah. Sorry. Much better. Welcome to Portland. Thank you. The dream of the 90s is alive.